BGMMA Geek here, coming from the tropical setting that totally is not my mom's basement. I'm here with Derek Minner, hanging out. Uh, he just got finished having a late night, putting in that work per usual, supporting the people. How are we doing right now, my man? Uh, doing good, brother. Just uh, just chilling on Sunday, watching a little football. Glad to hear. Awesome. So to start things off, when, you're, when you had that big upset in TJ Laramie, you guys didn't have much of a feeling out process. I know you're not really a slow starter. You're more of a take it by the balls and just take it and win it and kick their ass, punch their face in. <laughs> Were you surprised when uh, TJ Laramie sort of just fell right into your guillotine and gave away his neck? Uh, I think he, I think he didn't plan on it, but I believe it was through the setup of everything of like the whole fight, how the 30, 40 seconds played out before I ended up getting his neck wrapped up. Uh, that kind of set up to him basically wanting to give up his neck. I feel like. Awesome. Yeah. I could see it, no no question. So, doubters slept on you, and you proved them wrong. Uh, I saw you were a betting underdog. Would you say you th you thrive on the underdog energy, or would you prefer to be a betting favorite? Uh, either way, I don't I don't really take any one of those in consideration, man. I've been the, I've been favorited. I've been I've been an underdog in my big fights, uh, every one of them. So. Nah, man, I, I don't really take it to heart. You know, it is what it is. You know, it's kind of good when I am the underdog. All my buddies win a bunch of money, so. Yeah, great point. Um, so you've choked out more people than Darth Vader. What are your best techniques to drill your MMA grappling? Uh, man, I just do I just do a lot of no-gi, and we just do uh, drilling techniques. I, I just go – I do transitional stuff a lot. Like, I don't ever sit on one choke or one everything. So, like, even if I know I got it, I'll, I'll do a lot of just moving to the next position, moving to the next position if I can, you know, just to get my transitions down because if the first choke do not get you, the, the second, third, fourth one might, you know. Yeah, no question. That explosive style is just really trending, especially in the featherweight division. I mean, you guys just take over, snatch limbs. Um. So you've had a very illustrious career, and you've cited it with its up and ups and downs. It's safe to say that you're no stranger to adversity, and you've made a better comeback than Meek Mill. So looking back in your career, is there any loss that you would want to run back, considering the recent improvements in your game and having James Krause in your corner now? Uh, man, the, the one loss that, that's on my record that, you know, I would run back, obviously, I mean – I, I'd like them all back, but the one, you know, that I could have right now would be Jordan Griffin. You know, we were scheduled to fight in June, and uh, I I uh, fought him in LFA, and I, I beat him up pretty good until I got caught uh, in the second round, at the end of the second round. So, um, yeah, that was supposed to happen in June in the UFC, so maybe they'll put that together at some point, you know, either this one, the next one, whenever, but at some point, I, I definitely want to run that back. Yeah, no question. I'd love to see it. So... You've got over 20 submissions to your names. Uh, are there any limb snatching specialists that you could say inspired you, like a Kazushi Sakuraba or a Shinya Aoki or a Damian Maya, so to speak? No, nah, man, I don't really uh, – I think I kind of blend my own style into it. But, like, I always, like – when I used to train at Black House, I really looked up to, like, the styles of, like, Pedro Munoz and then uh, Cabrinha, the way, they, the way they rolled and the way we rolled together. And, you know, I kind of took a lot from that – few camps I did out there so yeah I, I like that style that, that I've actually rolled with you know so it's just different that makes total sense that that's a really good way of putting it because the uh Brazilian style is uh slept on a lot nowadays and there just truly isn't any uh MMA grapplers that make it their own and just really uh put all the pieces together and apply it to mixed martial arts so would you say you would classify yourself as a submission specialist or a grappler in, gen grappler in general? Because I saw you a wrestler at Nebraska City. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrestled in high school, uh, obviously in Nebraska City, and I wrestled one year in college uh, in Iowa, um, at a uh, community college in Iowa. But, yeah, man, I would just – I'm kind of like a, just a submission grappler, you know? Like, I don't know. I'm not a submission specialist. Like, there is obviously a, a few submissions that I specialize in and that if you get trapped in there, obviously my guillotine, if you're trapped in there, you ain't getting out. But um, – I'm just a submission grappler, man. I like to – I'll jump on, you know, submission after submission after submission, you know. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you snatch next, cash checks. 
So you've got some pretty badass tattoos with some deep metaphors. I saw you had your own little ink interview. That shit was pretty cool. So do you have any new tattoos you plan on getting tatted? Any new ideas? Man, uh, yeah, I, I definitely don't. I'm uh, My grandpa recently passed away, so I'll get a memorial tattoo for him somewhere. But I, my arm needs finished still. It's been a long work in progress. And, yeah, I got I got a few ideas, but hopefully we can get into my tattoo artist is pretty busy and then i get into fight camp and we can't get new ink because i'm not going to go to fight camp with brand new ink you know so we'll see yeah they do look awesome though a lot of people just have like blotches of fucking color on their skin it kind of sucks Thanks, shout man. out uh cody garbrandt uh actually no his are all right i didn't mean to throw that shade uh -huh. but still you know what i mean so now yeah. you're damn near a ninja, counting your entire skill set. You're fighting at a high level, and you can give just about anyone a run for their money. So with that said, would you have any dream fight uh, you could have, and why? Any sort of fantasy matchup? Man, I, to look at it in hindsight, like, you know, or, man, I don't know. I, I would like, you know, like, guys like the old school guys, like, it'd be cool to be standing across the cage from, like, a guy like Frankie Edgar, you know, somebody like that that you've looked up to. Like, he's one of my favorite fighters, but, like, guys standing across from you that you've looked up to, whatever, and now you're competing against him. So, like, guys like that that I've been watching for years and years, and I've, I've loved watching them, you know, and that somebody like that standing across from you where you're like, damn, this is really happening. You know, one of those surreal moments that I think that you could capture uh, in the sport. Yeah, I'm sure that must feel like damn near a dream when you're fighting somebody that you've been watching mm. for the past 10 years. All right, well, I'm not going to keep you. That's all we got for today. Thank you for answering my questions, and I hope we can do this again sometime. Ryan, brother, just uh, let me know, and I'll, I'll come on. Awesome, man. Thank